big news, Trump uh, did indeed pull out of the Paris Climate Accord. He did what uh, we all knew he was going to do, and in the process, he's done serious damage to the global effort to combat climate change, and he's thoroughly embarrassed the U.S. on the world stage. If you've just heard the reactions from world leaders over the last 12 hours on this decision, um, anger, mockery, um, all of it well-deserved, frankly. We'll talk more about uh, this a bit later and throughout the show and in your phone calls. Suffice to say, though, that uh, the president has made a number of very destructive decisions so far in his administration, and this one could be the most destructive, considering we are literally talking about the fate of the planet. Bad news, it's not something that we can impeach him over. Good news, he's done a lot of other things, though, that we can impeach him over. And given that uh, the planet can't wait around for another four or eight years before the U.S. decides to do something about global warming, maybe the best bet is to get the ball rolling on impeachment ASAP. Joining me now is someone who is making that same exact case. It's John Nichols, the esteemed national affairs correspondent with The Nation magazine. Hey, John, good to talk with you again. Sam, it's an honor to be with you. So here's how I've been approaching this impeachment question. I was concerned at the beginning that Democrats were relying too much on the Russia probe, hoping it would be the silver bullet that takes the Trump administration down. I know a lot of people on the left are absolutely convinced that there was collusion between the Trump campaign uh, and the Russians, or that there's some sort of P-tape out there or something uh, involving Donald Trump. But ultimately, I saw it as a big risk because it could very well be that there is no impeachable offense here, that Michael Flynn had violated the Foreign Agents Registration Act and Manafort and all these other things. Whatever comes out of it, it might not be something that could lead to Trump's impeachment, and thus all the energy here might have been squandered. I still think that, but then Trump came along and did a huge favor by firing the FBI director, James Comey, and suddenly it's not just the Russia stuff that's on the table for impeachable offenses, it's obstruction of justice and abuse of power. And as of right now, we have a lot more evidence backing up those crimes than any of the uh, collusion stuff. So how should Democrats play this new hand that Trump has given them recently? Well, you laid things out very well. And uh, one thing that's important to understand is impeachment is a political act. It is not a legal action. Most people struggle with that. Uh, and it's in part because uh, I think our political elites are so frightened by the concept of impeachment mm. that they fetishize it. They turn it into something uh, that seems like a third rail. That's not how the founders intended it. The founders intended for the people and their elected representatives to have a vehicle to remove an official who was corrupt, who was lawless, or who was simply managing the office in a way that was destructive to the United States, that was damaging to the, to the country, to its democracy, to its functioning. They didn't want for a president to be a king for four years, i.e. untouchable during that time, or to be, as a term that was also used long ago, and elected despot. So impeachment is something that can be used when there is wide-scale popular sentiment that it's time to get rid of someone. You don't have to have uh, an indictable offense. You don't have to have you know, all the evidence of a crime. But you have to have a clear sense of wrongdoing. You are undoing an election result, so you don't want to take it casually. But by the same token, you don't want to be so uh, fetishized again that you can't, you know, you can't do it unless you touch every button and look every way and stand on one foot, etc. If we use that standard, the founding standard, the intended standard for impeachment, then Donald Trump has has by almost every measure, in fact, I would say by every measure, met it. Um, it is clear that Donald Trump and those around him have not respected the emoluments clause of the Constitution. It is clear that they have connived and manipulated and gamed the process in order to, uh, at the very least, protect themselves, potentially to advantage themselves. 
And remember, let's just say that perhaps we're talking here about a Jared Kushner rather than Donald Trump. And yet it's Donald Trump who empowers these people. And so, again, you have a clear opening to have a discussion about impeachment. It's appropriate. It's healthy. There's nothing wrong with it. Now, that's going to be hard, of course, because Paul Ryan will literally come up with a defense for anything that Donald Trump does. We understand that. But the fact is that if Democrats get their act together on this and speak about it in clear and coherent ways, and if they are respectful of Republicans who also have deep concerns, and there are a number of Republican members of the House who have expressed deep, deep concerns about what's going on, there's clearly the opening for raising the impeachment debate, and then you see where it goes. Remember one final note on this. If you take impeachment off the table, if you say, well, that's just something we're not going to do, that we're not going that way for whatever reason, uh, be it political, be it practical, be it you know, whatever, then what you are saying is you're rolling all of your dice. You're counting entirely on investigations by a Republican Congress, uh, by a, a Mr. Mueller, uh, perhaps by others, which could take years to complete. And that's absurd. I mean, if you've got a clear sense that the guy is doing damage to the country, you don't say, oh, well, but the one thing you, that the founders intended for you to do if there's a clear problem, that's off the table. Hmm. we got to wait for something else to come along. That's silly. It's irresponsible. It's certainly not the way that our Constitution was outlined or, or defined to operate. I, I enjoyed your line in your recent piece on this issue in The Nation in which you say basically that uh, impeachment won't cause a constitutional crisis. It's to cure a constitutional crisis. And you, you brought up emoluments because that's another potential offense that Trump has committed here. And we just got news last week that the Trump Organization is not doing its due diligence to uh, segregate its, its revenue it receives from foreign sources, which could be emoluments in violation of the Constitution. They said that that would be too burdensome for them. So they're just basically, you know, throwing those rules out the window here, and nobody seems to be holding them accountable here. And you see, that is actually why you have this political repair, right? Uh, because when you have rules, uh, many of those rules have to be applied uh, by interpretation. Right? You say, well, no, what you're doing is not right. You are not following the rules as is intended, and as a result, uh, the branch of government that is designed to check and balance the president, to check and balance the executive branch, and that's the legislative, that's the Congress, has the power to hold you to account again. With impeachment, you don't have to go to court. You don't have to you know, hire tons of lawyers and do all the, the structural stuff that goes with the judicial branch of government. With impeachment, it is a political act. Congress has the power to move, and if there is sufficient support, to impeach a president and to try that president in the Senate for wrongdoing. It's a, it's a, and, and here's the interesting part about it. With a Repu I like it even better in some ways, the absurdity of the circumstance we're in. I think here you have a Republican Congress, right? You've got a Republican House, Republican Senate. Um, certainly, they're not going to bend over backwards to punish a Republican president. It's not their nature. And yet if we presume, and we should, that there are some principled Republicans, um, if – you raise this issue, you essentially force the Republicans to address the fundamental questions. But if you take the issue, if you take the proposal for impeachment off the table and you say, well, we're not going to talk about that, then you, you create this void in which everybody's waiting for the next shoe to drop rather than the legislative branch actually doing its job. Hmm. John, uh, we're about to run up into a break here. Do you have a few more minutes to stick around till about the half hour mark? I got a few more questions on this issue. 
I'm delighted to talk to you. Great. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hit a break. We're going to uh, talk to Free Speech TV and talk a little bit more about this. And then we'll come back for, for the radio listeners and get to the whole issue of why Democrats seem so reluctant to pursue this impeachment uh, case and uh, what kind of benefit there would be for them if they did actually pursue it. We're here. We're talking with John Nichols, the national affairs correspondent with The Nation magazine. We will be right back.